Welcome, my math friends, to week four of the second semester. I hope you all enjoyed your extended weekend, um, and I hope you had a great week last week. I know I was out two days, um, a little head cold, I still suffering a little bit, but I was really happy that things went so well um, with you guys and our substitute, Miss G. Um, that really takes a lot of uh, makes relief for me to know that that um, you're you're in good hands and that you're treating our sub well. So thank you for doing that. Um, I brought the rice home. Speaking of of um, being in good hands, I brought the rice home so we can continue this experiment. I will send good positive energy to our one rice, and I will continue to tell that other rice that it's worthless. The third rice I left at school, ignoring it, not worried about it. We shall see what is in store for our rice this coming week. So far, no noticeable difference between the two. Now, um, next thing I want to tell you is as soon as we're done with this, as soon as you're done watching, go on to the Google Doc I created this weekend, just an update on where we all are with our foundation course. Um, ideally, you're going to be right around 30% done with that course. Some of you are a little bit past that. Some of you a little bit below that. So just an opportunity to take a look and see where you are currently and then make a goal for this week on where did you, how much would you like to accomplish for this week. And I think for a lot of you, there's an opportunity to establish a pretty ambitious goal, kind of pick it up a little bit. I, I would love to be done with this course within a few weeks. Uh, remember, this is just a foundation course. It's about 12 or 15 different topics, real tight and focused. And then we can move on from there and get back into all of the, um, the some of the algebra, more of the algebra stuff that you guys are working on right now. Um, last thing I want to leave you with is leave you with is a, a little mindfulness um, thought and an opportunity for you to grow a little bit in, in the area of making good decisions and making compassionate decisions. So what does that mean? It simply means when you're going to make a decision, when you're going to do something, and every, every time you have an action, you really, when you think about it, you made a decision to do that. So when you do that, to make it compassionate is simply to ask yourself, is what I'm about to do or what I'm doing, is this causing suffering? Am I increasing the suffering of the world or am I decreasing it or maybe it's just neutral? So ideally, you know, most of your actions are not increasing suffering. If they are, maybe you should rethink whatever it is that you're doing. So, um, and there's an important element to this process that we're pretty good in our culture. We're pretty, pretty good with this, this idea and we're pretty well trained that before we do something, we have an idea if it's going to hurt someone. Uh, and we're usually uh, pretty good about trying to not be harmful. Um, but there's one person that we often forget about when we try to judge about whether or not an action is going to be harmful or not or, or cause suffering. And allow me to illustrate that with an example of, uh, that I see occurring right here in our classroom here, in our math room. I often see many of you coming in and you'll get on the computer and you often spend perhaps a little too much time distracting yourself from that wonderful wholesome activity of growing your knowledge in math. Often I will see you on YouTube searching away for random craziness to look at, things like maybe movie clips or epic failure compilations. Some of you even like to watch um, fighting on YouTube, just not very wholesome, positive things I often witness, um, just kind of distracting and wasting time. So I ask you to consider, is this a compassionate decision? Are you hurting anyone when you do this? And I will bet you a lot of you will at first consideration think, no, not really. I'm not really hurting anybody. It's, I'm, it's my time. I'm choosing to do this. I know I'm kind of wasting it, but so what? Mr. Richter, you know, maybe he gets a little bit upset, but that's his thing. He doesn't have to be upset about this. I'm responsible for myself. So he doesn't, he's not responsible for me. Maybe your parents will get a little upset if your grade goes down. And you may say, you know what? That's their thing. They don't have to get upset. It's my, my grade, my life. If, it's okay, if I'm okay with it, then everyone else should be too. And I will have to give you, there's a little truth to that. I, I can see some wisdom in that thought process. But I, what I want you to think about is, have you really considered everyone in that little equation? I think you often forget the most important person, perhaps. It's not your teacher, it's not your parents, it's not your friends. The most important person to consider when you're deciding if something is compassionate or not is yourself. 
Are you bringing suffering unto yourself? And we often glance, just gloss over that most important person, ourself. And I would say, I think you know what I'll say, yeah, you are causing yourself some suffering when you waste time, when you distract yourself. You squander the time that's available to you in the computer room um, and you will bring suffering in a greater sense um, to yourself. So think about that a little bit. Try to be more mindful in your actions and remember that most important person um, when you think about being compassionate is yourself. Start with yourself. If you can learn to be compassionate to yourself, make good decisions that help and benefit you, then you can start to expand out from there. Help others. But start with yourself. So I will leave you with that thought. I will leave you with the most important um, common message to all these mindfulness things. Remember, anytime you have a problem, anytime you have to make a decision, anytime you have to do anything in your life, always start with taking that most powerful force that you can control. It's your consciousness. You control that consciousness through your attention. Always start by bringing your attention back around to yourself. That's always the beginning. Once you bring your attention back to yourself, you start to, what we say, get grounded, become centered. And from that place, good decisions will arise. So my friends, I leave you with that. Find time to bring some attention to yourself this week. See what you see. Listen to yourself. Grow from that. And have a wonderful week. I will see you in the real world.